Okay, we're on the intro is playing. The mic is unmuted, so hello people. We'll be back. What we can talk already? You're listening to the Go Lightly Marshall Hour on freedomtalkradio.net. Because when he went to Malta, originally where his parents come from, he was born in Australia, but when he went there originally it was a lovely place. Um, now it's all uh, been totally consumed like the modern cities are. And um, everyone's covered in tattoos and uh, the same he saw as he went through um, Rome, the tattoo phenomena. Now how this comes about? The uh, tattoo phenomena is not new. It's uh, something that is mentioned uh, concerning Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, the painted eyes and all this kind of thing. Uh, so uh, to uh, emulate that, what the world order has done is uh, you have um, these uh, shows where uh, Simon Cowell, for example, um, would be uh, in a panel watching uh, American Idol or something like that and um, the girls that are encouraged to uh, start them if you like although there's lots of girls out there with talent that can sing the ones without tattoos don't get too far so the idea was to put in the public eye of the child that's watching this that a tattoo is a thing to have so artistically most people have no idea um, if you're going to do a tattoo, uh, a, a very artistic work would be like um, a true work of art. And although I don't admire it myself, on a person, a, a work of art is one thing, to plaster it all over your arm is another. But there's so many tattoo parlours, in fact in uh, Harvey Bay here, uh, which is just a few kilometres down the road from us in Tugum, they are uh, opening another tattoo parlour, as if there isn't enough. And uh, the social experiment that's going on in uh, Harvey Bay uh, has produced a race of people uh, that are, the women in particular, are walking mountains of lard. It is absolutely extraordinary. So uh, there's, there's various towns you can go to throughout uh, Australia, the eastern coast here, and we've done that. And we'll find that there are some people uh, slim. Other towns you go to, they've got some other affliction. We noticed that when we went into uh, Fiji, the uh, disease of, uh, of choice of the uh, Jews was to introduce diabetes and so we cured diabetes pretty quick. We got New Guinea of course it's AIDS and malaria and um, what we noticed when we was in Fiji was uh, you go into a supermarket and the cooking oils which are the polyunsaturates are all at the height in large containers and you just drag it straight into your shopping cart so it becomes convenient. So they have soy oil, they have canola they have um, sunflower and uh, various types of uh, cooking oils 
which is what causes a plastic film to develop over the receptors of the cell. Now how a cell works in this case, the insulin goes through the blood from your pancreas and uh, uh, the little fingers that sit up off your cells, on the ends of them they have to dock with the uh, insulin molecule. And if it's got plastic as you would in a battery, if you insulate the battery terminal with a piece of plastic and then try to uh, hook it up to your car to make the car run, it won't run. So it, likewise the plastic builds up over time from the cooking oils and the cooking oils is what the problem is, it causes the plastic build up because it is a um, polymer. And we was there very, very short period of time. We was unindated with people who had diabetes. And um, we began using the calcium hypochlorite, uh, which you buy from the local pill store for about $20 for a couple of kilos. And um, you put that in a pill, consume it, and within hours you've got uh, rid of the diabetes. But it also, according to Jim Humble, his uh, tests throughout the world, because he's the man who discovered it in the first place, him and I was talking about uh, using calcium, hy calcium hypochlorite, and uh, he was saying, oh, you've got to get this grade, you've got to do this to it, you've got to be refined, blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, we use it uh, for natives, where there is no opportunity to have uh, any of this kind of thing. Uh, readily available, so we wanted to be able to say, right, we're just going to use the calcium hypochlorite straight out the out of the pool store because it's available in every pool store in the country or in the world, don't it? No swimming pools. So uh, suddenly, uh, I've heard recently that he is recommending the same thing. So he's we told him of our results up in New Guinea and uh, Fiji, and now he's come around saying. So realising that the, the facilities of making a scientific preparation in a laboratory like he was trying to do is fine if you've got it all set up. However, you can't do that when you've got an 80 flying down from the highlands of New Guinea to get these pills. Um, and for free, we give it away for free, then uh, we can't afford to be having it. the facilities. What he would do if he was in the same situation, because he's a much more advanced in the scientific level than I am. So we'd give it to them and it works. As for babies, what uh, uh, you've got to do in that case, because your skin is an absorber, you put some of the calcium hypochlorite, not too strong of course, in a, uh, in a tub of water, uh, hot water, and the baby, the pores open and the calcium hypochlorite goes in through the pores and you'll have the same results when you want to cure your baby of malaria. You don't have to give it to them in a pill. That's what I'm saying. Now, my dumpy darling is back again, and uh, she's smiling away there. Her lips have been done, her eyes look good. Uh, the hair has been fluffed just right. Um, I haven't touched it. Looking good. I, I haven't okay. touched it for two hours. Oh, well, I, I, I was doing it to myself. So <laughs> I, must, uh, I thought it was you. So, no, I did that all that before we started filming <laughs> John's conversation. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I just mentioned a little bit about John, his trip. Yes, we'll, and, uh, we'll play that, we'll upload that for tomorrow's show, Tuesday. We'll upload it as is, because uh, he said, oh, you might want to censor it, cut this out. No, no, you put it up as is, and uh, the sound fades in and out a little bit, um, because we've been having problems with the computers again, and um, we ended up doing it on Skype, which it worked out all right, but it still was fading in and out, so you'll have to put up with it, but we'll put it up in its entirety, and um, listen to an innocent man who um, loves... Uh, Jesus loves God, loves Malta, loves Christians, loves people. Loves people. And uh, is uh, rightfully hates the Jews. <laughs> yeah. He worked for them. His you know, own personal experience of how they yeah. tried to destroy his life. Mm. Kill him as well. They tried to kill him in a car accident as well. Mm. So he knows all about it. And of course he survived it for this very reason. So you're going to be listening to a saint. That's the whole point. I, I didn't do much talking in it like I don't usually talk. I listen. Uh, because I can talk all day, I don't want to do that. I, I want to hear people uh, with their uh, experience on earth 
and uh, how they have evolved and how they feel about it all. And um, and um, what he did make a comment. He said that me as a seventy-year-old man is like talking to a twenty-eight-year-old because they don't talk like an old man. Hey, what is that there? Is that when you say, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? What was that? When I first met a little is why I can't remember when he went around. <laughs> I used to do that impersonation for the girls. Too. Walter Brennan. Walter Brennan. <laughs> now, you wanted me to read that document that uh, yes, came about. Uh, this come from John. Um, well, he, he, he posted it he to posted his Facebook. To I picked Facebook it up. And, and, um, my little it's a link being shared around. Now... A little glowing sweetie over here. <laughs> this, it's been out there since May. I noticed that um, it was on. <clears throat> Just to um, Infowars picked it up on May. 30th. Of course, at the end of it, it uh, is a disclaimer that it's all bullshit. Well, but well, no, <coughs> no, I'm not sure. I'll just read it as it is in its entirety. It's, um, not, it's not bullshit. This is it, what is this is reality. Yes. Um, but yes, when I got to the last paragraph, uh, no, look, this has to have been much like, what was that show that they put out there when people thought it was real? Years ago, Alfred Hitchcock or something, um, you know, they released it on the radio show and people thought it was real. Alfred Hitchcock! <laughs> <laughs> That's when the Marge invasion was on, right? Yeah, some, yeah something like that. That's right. Because I'll, get, I'll just go straight to the last paragraph and then I'll read the document to you. So this finishes. So, of course, all this is the pure fiction. Now, this is supposed to have been translated from a French document because the, the Bilderberg meeting was in France throughout the end of May and June this year. And this is supposed to be a translation of the French document, the, the closing remarks of the... So, it finishes. So, of course, all this is the pure fiction. And yet, if Mayo said that a mouth to feed was two useful arms, today he would say a mouth, it is always a mouth of excess. Especially when there are seven billions and when the arms soon will not be of no use anymore. And Mayo, the great humanist, what would he have done in such a context? It is already too late. And then it says, get ready and stay tuned in. It says, till tomorrow, if you would not mind. It's a funny way to finish. Well, I have no idea what he's talking about, but uh, get into the uh, reading of it. Yes. So this is a, a leaked a document, hello, out of the French um, undercover people, you might say, that had spied on the Bilderbergers and uh, therefore it's coming straight out of the Bilderbergers' mouth and uh, they want this out there so that you can accept it as being what they are actually doing to you and then ending it saying it's fiction. Now, this... It, it, this is the way it comes up. This is from a, a, a J Haynes six WordPress dot com. It's a woman. Her name is Jean. Must be Jean Haynes. It says leaked Bilderberg closing remarks twenty fourteen. Now the Bilderberg meeting with meeting ah uh, was in Copenhagen, Denmark, on the twenty ninth of May to the first of June. So we got twenty ninth, thirtieth, thirty first of May, first of June. Yet. After I read this around the net, it was showing exactly the same thing on Infowars on May the 30th. So it's two days before it's supposed to be the closing remark. So you figure it out. It says, apparently this is not a very good translation from the French, but it certainly does not hinder our understanding. This is from Jean who said that. Leaked Bilderberg closing remarks. Now, it's from another site that's called lecontrarian.com. Yeah, contraire. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the contrarian meaning... Who gives a contrary. shit? No, contrary. Contrary Mary? Yeah. Rebellious. Exclusive scoop. The top secret classified report of the last meeting of Bilderberg. Mm. My dear contrarians. 
and, and these people are misspelling, my dear contrarians, again. This is a special edition, very special, that I would propose today. I would like you to understand the real ways of the world, the world in which we live, but more likely for a, for a very long time. I produce in lines below the exclusive report of the last meeting of Bilderberg, this meeting which is held every year and which attend personalities of very high level of all the countries of the world. It is in this kind of inner circle set that for decades shapes the world of tomorrow. Before addressing the bulk of the document which has been leaked, I suggest you watch this video of TF1. It dates back 40 years, well almost, 1977 to be exact. And yet, and it's got the link to a, a, a YouTube document, a uh, video rather. So it's a bit like Henry Ford saying, uh, okay, record, record account of annual meeting, classified top secret for exclusive use of members. Okay, in this 1977 video, TF1 journalist Eves Morosi is speaking of the pronouncing of the Bilderberg meetings of inner circle officials of different countries meeting and with British journalist Gordon Tether speaking of the attendees of how people of power be made. Yves Morusi speak that they would surely speak again about the Bilderbergers, but not so. There was no more of the reporting by news journalists of the Bilderbergers after this. Gordon Tether's articles were banned and when he refused to comply with the news media's bans of reporting on Bilderbergs, he was fired and banned from all news organisations. Other news journalists got the message, comply or else. Then there's the link to the video. The above video is on a page with several other videos and it appears to be all in Russian. For our purpose here, then it seems meaningless. Um, Alright, closing remarks by the chairman of the meeting. So, of course, there's no identification of who that is. Beyond capitalism, crossing the new frontier. So, this is where it starts. If we continue to maintain control of the masses by the classical wage labour within a framework of a system built on mass production and mass consumption, with the solvency of the consumers by allocating a portion of the wealth created via work, we all have now acquired the certainty that the long-term survival of the human species, the backup and the sustainability of a viable biosphere, and in harmony with the human activities required, a total reorganization of our modes of thought, organization and production. As we all know, in fact, the goal we are pursuing is neither totally vain accumulation of new wealth or even the rescue of an economic system. It was used for more than 300 centuries, so that's 300, uh, that's three, oh rather, it was used for more than three centuries and became incompatible with our vision of the future. The objective which we pursue is obviously the one of the eternal life or in any case the passage to the man living two centuries. And we join here the ambitious ideas of transhumanism which we wish to develop, to install, to favour the emergence of a new human being, of a superman. I'm thinking of that movie that Robin Williams was in. He, he became a transhuman and they lived 200 years. Remember? Um, no, oh, Adam will know what it is. I've seen it. I watched it. Adam the clue. All right. As well as our technologies allow us from now on to possess said tools of augmented reality. Our researchers perfectly succeeded as regards the increased man. Our technologies are perfectly developed. We are ready to live two centuries. Our nanotechnologies allow us to repair the bodies of the inside. The decoding of the human genome allowed us to understand the functioning of the cellular aging, which we are not capable of stopping, 
but of slowing down considerably. Our control of stem cells... I can stop cells. their aging quite easily. <laughs> called a bullet? It's called a bullet. 25 cents, eh? Our, in fact, I'll pay the 25 cents. <laughs> our control of stem cells allows us to remake, at the demand, any cellular tissue, or still obviously any organ, which would become failing. I have to just interject at this point. Oh, no, I'll leave it for tomorrow's. I'll just read this because I discussed it with John so you can get it tomorrow, <laughs> my interjections. Finally, our control of the human genome allows us well to select the most effective and most adapted genetic heritages without forgetting the fact that by modifying some, we can finally increase our physical as well as mental abilities. Our illustrious predecessors of the 30s thought naively that we would, we could transpose for the improvement of the human race. The methods used for the optimization of dog breeds by crossings skillfully organized. Nevertheless, these failures of the Nazism allowed us to explore new ways and to reach the success which we celebrate today. We finally uncovered the secrets of the eternal life. The ultimate conquest of the human became, of the man, become finally his own God and his own master. We are all, us here gathered, Alpha and Omega of this new world, which opens to us and which it is thus advisable to us to shape. Obviously, as you know, it raises absolutely colossal problems of implementation. And it was all the challenge in the works of the various committees in which you participated throughout these intense days of seminar. We have all an acute consciousness of the fact that the planet and our environment cannot obviously support the eternal life of tens of billion human beings who would consume in the same way as today. We know all that an infinite growth, including demographics, in a finite world is an intellectual aberration. We all understood that to divide the world into two castes, that of the mortal and the immortal, would simply be impossible because in one case we suggest to live and to the others to die. So putting working and mainstream masses in a situation where they would have nothing to lose any more, except I remind to you that the main tool of the control of the peoples passes by the fact of granting benefits calculated allowing to give the illusion of a loss in case of rebellion. The whole of these fact returns the deployment of the technologies of immortality and improvement of the man simply impossible for the moment. The working groups have therefore submitted a number of proposals that were discussed by the full committee. I'll just cite the most important measures that were passed unanimously in accordance with our privacy practices of our Grand Masters. It will be up to apply and implement each in your respective country and geographical area of influence the following decisions. The initial objective is a massive depopulation in protecting at best the environment, which is tantamount to exclude from the fields of our possible use of any nuclear weapons, which would be tantamount to inflicting some irreparable damage to our so small planet. The resources that we have are few in number, but their cumulative efficiency is certain, since in returning to resonance, we will get what the military call a multiplier effect of force. It is the triptych, economic collapse, civil war, and massive epidemics. The use of these three tools should allow us to eventually reduce the world population 
Now here it has 7-10 billion inhabitants, 7 to 10 billion inhabitants. Well, it's not that many on the planet. Yeah, but that's projected perhaps in the near future. We think that to reach our objective of 500 million human beings alive is illusory and that in spite of all of our efforts of reduction, pockets of survivors will remain almost everywhere throughout the planet. Nevertheless, these pockets should not raise us of major problems, at least at first because of their disorganisation, their isolation and their incapacity to master all the techniques, if only current because of their weak number should limit considerably their power of nuisance. We think that in some years many will disappear and that little who will remain will return more or less quickly to the wild in a few generations. Any group that threatens us, in all cases, treated quickly. Our main historic enemy to the implementation of our plan was obviously the national states. Globalisation, globalisation, European institutions, mass, mass immigration were so many tools that we have used with great success for 30 years and now national identities and feelings of belonging were significantly reduced as patriotic feelings. Money and ownership have become the core values of many. The politicisation of the masses has been significantly reduced. Nations, as we hoped, become fragile and can now be destabilised from within. We thus have to pursue with constancy the immigration policy, allowing to make considerable masses of poor people come from the south into impoverished countries of the north. We have to, with constancy, make rise the most radical Islam to instigate at the most the hatreds and the dissensions, dissension in the peoples. When we will bring economic collapse, then the most absurd that we have developed in each country lead most of these countries to large scale civil wars where each community will be responsible for us to kill the largest number communitarianism members of the other community. When we shall provoke the economic collapse, then the most absurd communitarianism which we have developed in every country will conduct the largest part of these countries towards large-scale civil wars where every community will take charge for our account to kill the largest number of the members of the opposite community. Blacks against whites in the USA, Muslim against Christians in Europe, these civil wars will have the immense advantage to destroy the people without confrontations between degenerate countries into nuclear power world war. So that's what they're trying to avoid. <laughs> they don't want nuclear war. It will destroy. Yeah, right. It will destroy their uh, environment that they think that they're going to live in for. Anyway, finally, when the wars will destroy countries, we shall take advantage of it to amplify the distribution of viruses, such as our project of Ebola 2, modified genetically which we test at present with efficiency because we obtain invaluable epidemiological, sociological data, that is, behaviour of the individuals in front of the disease. But we also visualise our capacity to saturate systems of care, which will be already considerably degraded in every case by the civil wars which we shall have created on the example of the war between the two Ukraines. All these elements, lack of preparation of the peoples, their dependence towards all the support systems, will make them particularly vulnerable to our various actions. The economic collapse should quickly propagate to the whole planet. China will collapse under the weight 
of social unrest and Russia, which still raises us problems at the moment, should see its problems settled in 2015 as we hope for it. But let's say that for the moment it is the Russian-Chinese axis which sets the biggest resistance against our vision of future. We do not exclude if we did not manage to convince to use the weapon of the assassination targeted towards personalities, refusing our program of depopulation and the support to our ideology of the eternal life. All I've got to say is the insanity of these idiots. Obviously for all those who would not have understood it, what you have just read has no relationship with the reality and any resemblance with one or several existing characters would be purely coincidental or not. Ah, here it is. It's saying it is, of course, about science fiction or not completely. It was just the short story taken out of my fertile mind or elsewhere, which I wanted to tell you. You can, of course, fall to sleep again quietly. Let us say that it is just about the starting point of the fact that could be a novel. Yeah, so it is. It's, it's what I... Yeah. Hello? This Hello, is, darling. <laughs> Hello, it? it's not a serious piece. Yes, I just woke you up. This is, not, this is not news. This is how they do it. It's like a satire site getting people to ro report. It doesn't matter. It's out there. People read it and they get the idea because that's the idea they want to promote. I'll, you and I put the idea out and we get three views. <laughs> All right, listen to this. The eternal life, which is at the heart of the strategy of a company as Google, among which the links with the most secret authorities of the USA as the NSA or CIA are clearly demonstrated, asks the question of the possibility of the accessibility of all to the eternal life. Can we be 10, 20 or 30 billion human beings to populate the planet and to consume? The answer is naturally negative then in such a necessarily hypothetical case, then would we make men and women to read here an excellent article of the JDD on the Laurent Alexander's last book, The Death of the Death, detailing the strategy of Google. Apps? Detailing the strategy of Google. The transhumanism is, is not a fancy of the mind. It is even an ideology fundamentally profoundly disgusting that always existed even if it bore other names and other times. The transhumanism develops even in a relatively transparent way with almost barefaced and finally nobody finds so much anything wrong there but that there will be a man when the man will scientifically be improved to become a superman and does not it still remind you of anything. Other questions, we, f we begin finally to speak a little about the devastation that is going to cause the arrival of robotics and France too even dedicated a report on this matter on the JTTV news of 20 hours of yesterday on this study which announces the disappearance of 3 million jobs in France before 2025 but I can assure you that it will be much much more fast and which gives us fast a reason for hope by going to show us the company of aeronautics which even started work at the same time as it is installed. All this is aimed at the male mentality. Uh, I recall watching the Stepford Wife. It's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, you've never seen so many beautiful women all your life, and they're all robots. Mm. Eh? Mm. Like three or four of those per man is a great idea. However, it doesn't really fit with the creation. <laughs> right? God. But that's what human beings are today. They are robots. They are programmed by the media. Who would have thought 30 years ago when I was a youngster, well, the youngster, I'm still not that middle age, or 40 odd years old, when I saw people then, that they would become what they are today. Tattooed monsters, great fat blinks walking around everywhere. Mm. Harvey Bay is, is a typical uh, mm. centre for experiment on the human as what they can do, and these people are so stupid. Like we talked to a guy the other day, mm. telling him that he's 
wife had legionnaires. We told him how to cure it. We told him what the Pope had said. We told him how to look up the straw man, burn it, and get it downloaded for free. Of course, I didn't uh, say anything about it or did you that I was Christ. But the point is, uh, as soon as the name he goes, looks at the straw man, burn it, agreed to get the straw man back. Oh, yeah, we get all our money back now. And then see the name, it comes up with all this man is fraud, this man is bullshit, and blah, 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 which is great because it separates the Tars from the wheat. Mm. This guy is a complete and utter idiot. <laughs> right? Can't see past his nose. So we did tell him how to cure his wife. Mm. He's going to do that. And his daughter is also saying that the whole problem is all to do with Jews. Mm. Now, the, the fortunate bit is that they won't be able to keep their app shut. And, of course, the mother will talk to the daughter about the strange character and then mention the straw man burneth easy. You know, when I, I did that straw man burneth, as you know, I paid for it to be distributed through 900,000 bookstores. Right? I paid for that. Don't, don't raise your eyes up in the air. I'm telling you, don't no, try um, and change yeah. it. That's what it was. Right? My cash paid for it. I know exactly. When I pay for something, I know I'm getting or not getting, right? And I sold one book. And I bought it myself. So I thought that was quite, quite unique. In the heraldry of uh, booksellers, uh, I am the most unpopular author of all time. So you can go to the thestrawmanburnethlulu.com and you will get a book there on how to redeem your millions of dollars. Ooh. And try to do it, you won't be able to do it. Because your birth certificate has been sold as a child, you, didn't, you never had an original. We said, look, we talked to a lady in the club the other day, right? And we said, hey, your birth certificate has been sold from under you. Your mother has no choice in the matter. Someone buys your birth certificate, it's traded as, as a bond on the uh, stock market. And this is what the back of, of, of currency is. And what did she say? What did the woman say, this idiot? What did she say? I have my original oh, oh, birth I have the original. <laughs> Who gives a fuck whether you have your original birth certificate or not, lady? You're probably the only one on the planet. Right? Idiot. I'm telling you, this is what they are doing to you, and they're not interested. Her husband, she talked about as he walked away. They both had former spouses that had died of cancer, and always some wicked cure of cancer. Don't give a shit about that either. Mm. As he walks away, she said he's got an attention span of a gnat, wasn't it? <laughs> attention span of a gnat, yes. <laughs> is that not saying there that uh, there's something horribly wrong with a human being? Hmm. Now, this is the fall of Adam. Now, the fall of our Adam parable is exactly what's happened to the human race. They're getting stupider and stupider and stupider. They're not evolving at all. They have been You've devolving devolved. since Adam. Devolved. Hmm. Right. So we're not talking about the Adam idiot that got his wife to eat an apple. We're not talking about that bullshit story. What we're talking about is the parable of... Everything is told in parables. Like, let's get that straight. Now, what's a parable? In Hebrew, it's a marshal. Hello? So everything has been told throughout the Bible, whatever you read, it is like this. Mm. Right? So you read the story, and it puts the mind into a... Oh, yeah, I know. I understand that bit now. Blah, blah, blah. This is what Zedekiah did. No, no, no. That's not the story. The story is what is the effect of the world on reading the shit today, 2,500 years later. What is the effect? Well, the effect is what you get. Go look in the mirror. An idiot. That's the whole idea of it. You're, you're using this bullshit Bible to show you that you have evolved because this is bullshit, of course. Therefore, the Evolutionists have snuck in there and they own all the universities because they're Jews and the corporations have put the money up for whatever's going to be re reported from any of the universities because the tenure is you have to have tenure to be in the university. Tenure means that you get your job, you keep your job as long as you do it at all. Mm. Right? Security. So you have now evolved and now we've got aliens coming in because people in the modern world have seen Star Trek. What do you think they Star Trek for? put the, the human mind into accepting the fact there's life out in space and you will be able to travel at these enormous speeds of mm. 7 warp or 8 warp or 30 warp or whatever times the speed of light. Still ain't fast enough. 
to get you here. Then they had the materialization of boom me up, Scotty, right? I even seen that, I watched a uh, Shroud of Turin thing the other day, and it talked about how uh, he was beamed up, right? They bring a Star Trek into it. Mm. Like, hello. So you're in a world of bullshit. Uh, I and mean, there's a Jew that, that died, and uh, his grandfather started to strangle him because you've come to the world of truth, which is... From the world of lies. You've come from the the world world of lies. lies. This is the world of truth and you're in big trouble here. So he spilled his guts even though he's a Jew. Okay, there's good Jews and bad Jews, but most of them are are idiots. Mm. Just like most Christians are idiots because they're Jews in here. Mm. Spiritual Jews. Judaism is the greatest mind-bending stupidity of all time. You believe this crap. So when the resurrection occurred, that was a little microcosm in the Bible of truth. right? And even that... You have to be very closely examined because of the translations. Put in a little bit here, take a little bit out there, blah, blah, blah. Then you go back to the original, the Essenes, and you look at the Essene report. Oh, yeah, right. You've got to be very careful there too because they've also been altered. So where are you going to get truth from? One, I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do to these bad bastards. And we are going to have paradise. And a little baby comes to the earth and has defeated Satanism worldwide. Mm. Now, if that's not a miracle, I don't know what is. <laughs> but that's what I do for a living. I feel good now. Oh, I got that off my chest. And who's listening? Who gives a fuck anyhow? Who God said fuck? I can, you can't. <laughs> that's the whole bloody point. Right? It means fornication under consent of the king, by the way, if you're too stupid to know that as well. And if I haven't offended you yet, please write in and let me know when something really pisses you off and I'll aim it at you personally. The stone the bill is rejected has become the head of the pyramid, not the corner. That is in the original scriptures that the borrowing from, plagiarising of the Essene Gospels, which were before the four Gospels or the 30 Gospels they had to choose from. So, you let the devil take complete control of you. It's like some enchanted evening. Some enchanted Once Lucifer has found you, he'll never let you go. Never let you go. And somehow, he'll have you by the balls from then on. <laughs> right? Right. Is it not true or not? It's totally true. Oh, right. Well, I'm going to give up reading that document now. It's, um... <laughs> Uh, well, it goes to show this kind of stuff that's out there. It takes up part of your day. That's why I say to you repeatedly, don't tell me, just leave me alone. I want to do what I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't want to hear the bullshit that comes to over the internet mm. because it is bullshit. Mm. It doesn't matter whether it's truth or not. We it's, haven't played it's the, on the internet going at what? We haven't played the bullshit song for a while. Can <gasps> you get it going? <laughs> I'm bullshit withdrawal. Let's see if I can find it. The worship uh, song in its entirety? Yes, let's do it.
Madame, 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 vous allez danser, mais il Ah oui, des chocs à voir. Des chocs à voir. मुझे फिक्र ये नहीं कि ये देश कैसे चलेगा मुझे फिक्र ये कि ऐसे ही में चलता रहे from the world of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and the truth will set you free. Okay, now the uh, PowerPoint that uh, I'm still working on, basically uh, it uh, demonstrates how uh, the Assyrian Empire uh, and through using various scholars, which you can sort out to be accurate, via the language via the uh, ancient records that are genuine compared to what we see in Germany and they have the uh, genetics being able to be tagged in this modern era to a region of the earth where they originated and that is that the uh, preaching of Jonah now we're getting to the Bible yet and that's this part is true we can take that to the bank this is where Jonah is said to have had the only sign of according to Jesus myself at the time that the only sign given will be Jonah. What's he do? He goes over to uh, at a time when uh, the Assyrians had got sick and tired of the Israel which descends from Sodom and Gomorrah through Solomon and uh, intermarrying with the Ammonites and the Moabites and uh, taking 666 talents of gold per year. This is a Solomon, Solomon's temple, all that. So what happens is that uh, they got the shits with Israel, huge, powerful nation, and they took it and put them all in bondage. So what are you gonna do with these millions of people, right? So Jonah goes there and uh, you got the whale story, which is bullshit. It, it's actually referring to a vision of the future and hell, what's going to be like unless he does it. So he's having a look into the future of uh, what the world will be like unless they uh, he does as he's told in the vision. Right? So he goes to the king. When he gets there, the king has already repented. All the, the nobles have repented. They're walking around in what's called in those days ash cloth, is it? Uh, ash. Covered himself yes. with ashes anyhow. Hmm. and uh, in poverty, that's the idea. So he says, let the people go. This is coming from the, uh, and it's true, it's coming from the bullshit Sack of... Uh, sackcloth, what he did was he put on sackcloth, took off his robes, yeah. put on sackcloth and sat in ashes. Right, that what happened? Yes. Right. Yeah. So something like that. Humility, in other words. Hmm. And he accepted Yahweh as being God. Hmm. Right? So, for a 12-year period, the kings of Judah that remained in Judah, because this is the royal line, which were Essene, by the way, as was all the prophets, Essenes, Isaiah was, a, was an Essene, as what, go back, right back to Enoch, Essene, his son, Mesuthla, Essene. These actually, these people existed. Right? There's a big difference between something that's talked about as a myth as opposed to people who existed. And it was Mesuthla who, with his sons, was responsible for building the Great Pyramid before the flood occurred, right? So, let's get into the actual nitty-gritty here. So, the people of uh, Assyria were blonde, huge people, uh, blue-eyed, and uh, white-skinned. So were the Essenes. That's why uh, when uh, we have reports of Caiaphas and uh, 
uh, the various uh, reports by uh, Pontius Pilate that Jesus was a, not one of the, the uh, people. He was very much different. Uh, I noticed on the uh, watching the uh, uh, Shroud of Turin, they've got him at 5 foot 11. Hello? I was 5 foot 11 when I was 12. <laughs> right? They were big people in those days too. Right? There was nothing for a man to be 6 foot 6 inches tall. They are big, big people. Right? And uh, so we get back to the story. So where do they all go to? Well, they go to Germany. Now, there's, there's little things like in Germany, people, when they got out of bed in the morning in Germany, uh, after the arrival of the uh, actually Hittite people, the Assyrians, uh, they would bathe first thing in the morning, same as the Essenes, right? Bathe first thing in the morning. In winter, in the cold. Hmm. They didn't have that problem in the, in the Middle East. But they carried on the tradition, this is what they had to do. That's why uh, they bathed first thing in the morning. So you see little things like that, how the links of, mm. of history is true. And then you've got now the DNA, which is available to a lot of scientists. And, uh, of course, some of them are able to get to the bottom of it. Not all of them, because right? everything's corrupted, but the ones who uh, actually do it. And they're looking at the mitochondria and the women. So it all goes back to the women, what I've been yapping on about for a long time now. That is all to do with the women. That's why the women have been turned into the whores of today. I mean, to go out with a nice woman today, if she's only been shagged by four or five guys, that's nice. Well, you've got a lucky one, right? There ain't a virgin left, right? The only way you're going to get them is kidnap one out of the buddy uh, maternity ward and then raise them in a cage, right? So this is what the problem is today. Now, they're also talking about abortion as being a method of, of control. Uh, of birth because uh, in Japan every child is born there's been another one been aborted so 50% of all pregnancies are aborted and now they're talking about babies at full term to be aborted after after and birth after after born, birth abortion aborted so if the mother says ah oh, they're not really a human being yet because they haven't been taught well aborted in here this is how the world has fallen into the Sodom and Gomorrah idea mm. so let us say that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't exist. Well, it does today. It's worse. So if Sodom and Gomorrah was a myth, irregardless of the fact, a parable it's certainly, only. It certainly, it certainly exists, exists today, today in the flesh. Yes. Right? I mean, I've known a lot of women in my lifetime, and I'll tell you what, they had been one version amongst them. Right? And they all put the hard word on me. It wasn't the other way around, by the way. I've told you that many times. Hmm. Right? So uh, this is how it is. It's not how I wanted life to be. When I was a little boy, I loved women. I thought they were the greatest things in sliced bread. And uh, I was quite clean on sliced bread, too. By the way. <laughs> My mother, in fact, worked for Sunshine across the work, across the road with Sunshine Bread. Did she? Yeah, she? got free bread now. So, yeah, so, uh, cut a long story short, I, I love women. I love girls. And I thought it was horrifying to think that uh, men would take it upon themselves to seduce a woman. I thought that was the most dreadful thing. I still do. I still make my skin cold even think about it because I am a little boy at heart. Right? You don't change. No. Right? I am lucky in the sense that I can remember creation, I can remember what women are supposed to be, and I can remember the love I had for these lovely little girls. And it doesn't matter whether I was pretty or not. It had nothing to do with it. Some of my aunties were ugly ass, <laughs> but I loved them. Mm. Right? Till I found out as a girl at all hearts. <laughs> so, right? Except for one. So this is the story of, of uh, what man has. It's a fall of man. Is it completely accurate? Completely. Right. So the story of the Bible, well, also, like, it's like this, and I say it in the PowerPoint that I'm doing, uh, that if you was in court and you bring a witness in and the witness is caught out on one lie and they've told a very, very convincing story up a lot to that point, uh, it's all thrown out by the judge. He lies about one thing, he lies about everything. Right? So this is a story of life today, that the Bible is all lies. Even the good bits, but you do sniff some out of it. right? Everything Paul says, he says some marvellous things here and there, but it's all bullshit. It's all Pharisee and Babylon. It's told Talmud, ruled by subterfuge, say what they want to hear and then do the opposite. 
Right? Don't let them think what you're thinking, because if you do, they'll turn on you and kill you. It's actually in the Talmud. If the Christians found out what we are doing to them, they'll turn and kill us openly. Mm. Well, I think it's a bloody good idea. Right? When I say rabbis, I say rabies. I mean that. They are like rapid dogs. So, Jesus wouldn't talk that way. I ain't your Jesus, sweetie. I'm the asshole that's come to judge. And I'll tell you what, you look front down at me, you've got a problem. Fear him that can kill both body and soul. Because I only want purified people in this world because now we're going to multiply them out into the universe once we get the shithole straightened out. Mm. Right? That's what it's all about. Mature c creation. Did Adam and Eve have an eight? Well, they did, but it was never used. <laughs> right? They were created as mature human beings, and that's what it means. Now, did Adam and Eve exist? Who cares? It's a parable, isn't it? Oh, I feel better now. We're out of time, aren't we? We yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> all so right. wait for the PowerPoint, folks. I'm trying to... Uh, actually, uh, I get to the point where I don't know why I should even do it. I think, oh, well, I've got to do it for the kiddies in the future because they're not going to be GMOs. They're not going to be influenced by you silly bastards out there that think I'm full of shit. These are going to be pure little children that's going to listen to the old man when he comes to the earth and found this disgusting piece of shit that I've got to talk to on a daily basis, which is most of the human kinds of the earth. Uh, if they could, they would kill me. And then it, the question is, you have to ask yourself, why ain't I dead? Right? Here I'm slamming bloody every government there is. I'm slamming every Jew that's, that's walking on the face of the earth. I'm pulling them all to pieces. I'm condemning the queen, she should be beheaded, right? Prince Charles, proud of being a, a descendant from bloody Vlad the Impaler, he should be beheaded, right? They all should be, all doctors should get 25 years in jail, right? And yet, here I am, yeah, the, yapping all, away. The, all doctors should be subjected to chemo and radiotherapy until they... Well, if they're going to recommend it, let them do it first, let them survive. <laughs> It's like it's like cutting the world population. <laughs> that, 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 you that, go first, son. Huh? That could be the final examination. They undergo chemotherapy and what radiotherapy, and then it's only five years if they're still alive, because there's a ninety-seven percent mortality rate. The three percent that survive can be given their doctors. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> they're allowed to practice as doctors. <laughs> How about we just line them all up and shoot? That's a really good idea. All right, we're going to go out with. Uh, American trilogy, ya yeah, singing. <laughs> <That do? laughs> Here we go. I'm going to uh, mute Mike and then pull the microphone out so we can listen to ya. So as I said, if, if anything out there, if I haven't offended you, please write in <laughs> and tell me what really pisses oh, you off, and I'll make a change. Yes, what what people fail to understand is that he is back, not as the goody goody. Well, not as the Mr. Nice Guy. He, look, you know, he was he he was an asshole then, for goodness sake. Just ask any Jew. Um, so what he's saying today is nothing that he didn't already tell them. How about vipers and adders, you are of your father who is a devil from the beginning and all the rest of it, and you're condemned to hell. An How open sepulture. An open sepulture. But he was nice to the people that were subjected to these. And today the whole world so is So I'm going around curing people like the Pope has recognised I've been curing people in New Guinea and so forth and opening clinics here, which cost me a nephew, which I told him, I'll yeah. kill you. But no, no, he's too stupid. So they killed him. Yeah. Well, good riddance, he was an asshole. Right. He was. He didn't deserve to live. No. I wouldn't have him living next door to me. Yes. Right? The same with my daughters, see, the way they carried on, right? I wouldn't have them living next door to me. They've condemned themselves by their actions. That's right. right? They had a choice. They could either go after me or go after the heart of a marriage. They go after the heart. It's easy. Yeah. Hi. Say that. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. What? Say goodbye. Hi, Mary. Say goodbye. I'm going to mute Mike. We'll be back. I can't think <laughs> too squarely these days. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm old and grey and my knees have been. <laughs> oh, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Good times there are now forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixie Lane. Glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, 
His truth is marching on. His truth is marching Go like the Marshall Hour, freedomtalkradio.net.